How extremely evil and cruel must you be to kill such magnificent creatures in the most unthinkable and atrocious way? Well, think again, it is happening. Rhinos were once abundant throughout Africa and Asia, leaving South Africa today with the largest population in the world of both white and black rhino. Now, despite intensive conservation efforts, poaching of these iconic species is dramatically increasing, pushing the remaining rhinos closer and closer towards extinction. Three of the remaining five species of rhinos are, have been classified as critically endangered, while two are listed as threatened. Today, rhino poaching has reached a crisis point, and if the killing continues at this rate, we would see rhinos go extinct in the very near future. The poaching is predominantly driven by the illegal trade in rhino horn, and the growing demand for it in some East Asian countries, mainly Vietnam and China. The ongoing demand for rhino horn in these countries is not just about medicine. They are, these are societies that continue to revere rhino horn for a complex cocktail of factors, including aesthetic qualities, associations of status and elitism, deeply entrenched healing traditions and national and cultural pride. Despite the fact that rhino horn has no proven scientific medical benefits, consumers are using it to treat a wide range of ailments relating to toxicity, inflammation to cancer and, believe it or not, even hangovers. Where do we start to change the views of individuals who believe rhino horn can be used as an aphrodisiac or in quack medicine based on cancer curing myths, driving these creatures to extinction? With you. Who doesn't love penguins with their black jackets and clumsy waddling? These charismatic flightlet birds are amongst the most popular animals visited in zoos and aquariums around the world. In the case of the African penguin, it has seen a population decline and the conservation status has been changed to endangered, demanding immediate conservation action to prevent further declines. African penguins have been blasted with a series of man-made threats and problems for over a century and are still seriously threatened by human activity. Today, drastic shortages of food caused by commercial fisheries are causing a steady and perhaps irreversible decline of these birds. Linked to diminishing food supplies due to overfishing is the fact that their staple food has moved away from the penguins' traditional breeding and hunting grounds due to climate change. Oil spills have inflicted great damage on African penguin populations, as well as feral cats preying on their nests, and, in the past, people removing guano from the nest, forcing them out into the sun. During the mid-20th century, penguin eggs were eaten as gourmet food. The destruction was increased because several eggs from each nest were smashed prior to collecting the others, in order to see how fresh they were. Nowadays, numerous efforts are underway to save the African penguin, including strict protection of these birds in their breeding sites. Oil birds are rehabilitated with great success. Artificial nest boxes are being placed in many of the breeding areas and a limited captive breeding program is underway in South Africa. How can we as the general public make a difference? We can help through donations, or simply getting involved in conservation efforts. Or the zoo may be the only place where you will ever see penguins in future. How can you not love vultures? They spend their entire lives cleaning up messes, 
and making the world a healthier place for anything that shares the environment with them. The Cape Vulture is Southern Africa's only endemic vulture species and its numbers have dramatically declined to such an extent that they are now considered to be endangered. On a daily basis, vultures face an unprecedented onslaught from human activities such as electrocutions because vultures find power pylons totally irresistible for perching, causing many to die. Another factor is farmers who are attempting to protect their livestock by poisoning carcasses and then leave them out to kill so-called unwanted predators such as jackals and leopards. But in the process, many vultures get killed. In addition, changes in the migration patterns of game and an increase in domesticated animals, which are usually buried when they die, have diminished the amount of food available to the birds and have led to starvation and dietary insufficiencies such as calcium. Previously, hyenas would tear a carcass apart before vultures had their turn in cleaning them up. Now, in the absence of these scavengers, there are no bone fragments to supply the necessary calcium for the vulture's own skeleton and for their chicks. All these challenges, however, pale into insignificance in comparison to the increased use of vulture parts in African traditional medicine, often referred to as muti. The consumption of vulture parts, or the wearing of it in lucky charms, is believed to increase the user's intelligence or give him the ability to foretell the future. This belief is based on the vulture's ability to find carcasses, which sometimes seems to be supernatural. It is really sad. Conservationists are battling to save pangolins before they are literally being eaten out of existence by humans. Eight species of these scaly anteaters are still in existence in India, China, Southeast Asia and parts of Africa. But for how long? Up to 100,000 pangolins are estimated to be hunted and sold every year, making the most traded wild mammals in the world. Shockingly, during 2010, 2,590 kilograms of scales, representing approximately 4,870 pangolins, were discovered to be used in traditional medicine to cure cancer, relieve palsy, and even stimulate breast milk. The meat is considered a delicacy in China, Vietnam, and other parts of Southeast Asia. Increasingly lucrative trade is driving poachers to capitalize by snaring the creatures in forest and sometimes feeding them gravel to increase their weight and value. Driven by our insatiable desire for food, humans have transformed every thinkable body part of these animals into a highly sought after menu. They use the pangolin's tongue in soups, they drain the blood to drink, and some animals are preserved whole in alcohol, only to be used later in brewing a kind of tonic wine. Obviously, the scales are also sold at very high prices on illegal markets. Individual body parts are also sold for medicinal purposes, which are believed to have a range of qualities, such as nourishing the kidneys, treating psoriasis, and, of course, working as an aphrodisiac. If this is not horrific enough, newly published recipes on preparing pangolin meat can still be bought online. This is unbelievable! What next? With great power comes great responsibility.